Okay, there's many things that go into an efficient growing operation. Uh, here I entitled this growing on the bottle. What this refers to is growing on a bottled um, carbon dioxide. These are some of the things that you'll need to allow the system to work effectively. We have some uh, tubing here with some holes in it to allow delivery. We have a regulator. Uh, we have a timer pictured here. We're going to go over a control it where you would place this. So growing on the bottle, this is bottled CO2. That is compressed CO2 here. This is a 20 pound bottle. And it consists of that regulator that's attached to the bottle and a monitor or controller. I just have chosen to use a controller here uh, and it is enabled with fuzzy logic to allow for a precise dosage of CO2 to my plants. These work in unison to help maintain predetermined CO2 levels um, so it's important that all these kind of work together and are all linked up um, for the efficient delivery of carbon dioxide to your plants. Now, CO2 bottle system, CO2 gas is um, stored and sold in metal pressurized cylinders, typically under high pressure, up to 2,000 PSI. And PSI stands for pounds per square inch. CO2 is commonly used for welding, fire extinguishers, carbonated beverages like sodas, but are common places now in grow facilities because of the potential for increasing yield, assuming CO2 is a limiting factor. The CO2 tanks, common cylinder sizes are 10 pound, 20 pound, and 50 pounds. However, keep in mind that this 10, 20, and 50 pounds is the weight of the CO2 you're purchasing and not the total weight of the CO2 and the bottle that it contains it. For example, a 50 pound steel cylinder with CO2, with 50 pounds of CO2, will actually weigh about 170 pounds. So keep this in mind if you're looking at storing or moving or transporting uh, these bottles. They will weigh much more than just what's stated or what you may think they weigh. Uh, CO2 tank safety. Pressurized bottles can be dangerous even if the gas inside CO2 is non-flammable and essentially inert. The high pressure can create a rocket-like effect if the regulator becomes suddenly broken or damaged. As a result, be sure tanks have a protective collar. So in this tank, this is an example of being an unsafe tank, there's no protective collar over this valve. If this was to break, this could create a very dangerous situation due to the pressurized gas. This is what you want to have. You want to have that protective collar in some way over that tank just to help reduce the chance of causing any sort of rocket-like or um, dangerous conditions if this was to fall over or break or, or get damaged here by something falling on it. The regulator, as I mentioned, another critical step here. This gets hooked up to the bottle right here. Um, these work with a controller that gets plugged in to release CO2 at a predetermined rate, which can be evident here. Running at 0.08 CFM, or cubic feet per minute, is considered about the standard, um, just to give you just a general idea of what to shoot for. But it can be higher or lower than that, depending on your operation. Keep in mind, though, if you are releasing at very high volumes, well, about 0.33 cubic feet per minute or greater, um, when CO2 is released at these high volumes, there can be a strong cooling effect, which can freeze the solenoid. To be an extreme example here of that cooling effect of high release of CO2. To counteract this, some growers will install a heater, so looking at high volume operations, where it will heat the CO2 to eliminate the regulator from freezing up. This is what they look like here. Again, this would attach to the tank, and then this part here would attach to the regulator. This needs a power source, so keep that in mind. This would need a power source to help warm up so that the CO2, while it does have a strong chilling effect, would not cause the regulator here to freeze and lock up. Now to deliver our CO2, an efficient delivery system, a small eighth inch tubing that has laser holes drilled in it. You can see one right here, one here, one here, um, at equal distances to allow for equal distribution of CO2 over a large area. So this can allow the night and circulating. You're not just getting one little point of injection, you're getting over a large area. Now that delivery system installation, if you notice the black tubing runs along the back of the grow tank here, and it comes down around here and up here. This allows you to open the doors here without having tubing to get in the way to be able to trim plants or take plants in or out if needed. Uh, there's those small holes to allow equal distribution, but I also installed a fan just above them. And this is pointed on a slight downward angle to help stir the air. The sensor is also placed above the tubing, allowing for an accurate reading of these conditions. So keep in mind that it is important to allow this system to work completely in unison and this is cooked up to a controller with fuzzy logic. As a result, this creates a nice way of dosing CO2 and creating nice consistent conditions for the plants to allow for efficient operation um, for the entire grow cycle. Keep in mind also you only want to deliver CO2 when the lights are on, um, and I control that through the programming of my timer that has fuzzy logic.